Hello, it's been some time since I posted my last video and I know I've been a little late but anyway here I am with my next video for my YouTube channel. Um, I had told you that I was going to talk about something which would basically encompass areas of culture, cultural studies, it would be looking at culture through um, uh, uh, the lens of feminism, through, through the lens of queer studies, masculinity studies and uh, in the morning I was listening to the radio and when I was listening to the radio I heard that they were having um, a program on uh, toxic masculinity. So I thought this would be interesting. So I thought let's let's hear um, what they have to say about toxic masculinity. The discussion was going quite well. I was enjoying it. And then suddenly um, one of the uh, panelists said that, oh, you know, we really have to talk about um, toxic masculinity. Um, we have to tell them the difference between sex and gender. And that is when I decided that the time has come for me to make a video. The difference between sex and gender. Here is the difference between sex and gender. There is none. This is something which I am appalled people still don't understand. Um, 30 years after Judith Butler wrote Gender Trouble, we are still saying sex is biological and gender is social. No, sex is not biological. Sex is social too. What we really have to understand is that sex and gender and sexuality, they all exist at the exact same time or rather they are imputed on us at exactly the same time. Well, if you have any problems understanding this, think of the time when a male child is born. Yes? So when a male child is born, um, everybody celebrates. I can't imagine anybody being unhappy with, with a boy. Um, so therefore a male child is born. Everybody is very happy. What is it? It's a boy. When they say it's a boy, what they are not saying is that they have already assumed that the boy is going to grow up to be a man. So gender has already been applied to the sex. It is not as though one becomes a man, one is born a man, one's destiny it is to become a man. What they don't say as well is that I have had a boy, so therefore the boy is going to grow up to be a man and that man is going to be a heterosexual man. So when somebody says I've had a boy, what they're thinking in their head is that I have had a boy who will become a man who will bring home a woman. So what they should have honestly said is I have had a boy and I am hoping that he will grow up to be a heterosexual man. So therefore sexuality, gender, they are existing at the same time that sex is existing. Now you're going to say but sex is biological. Well here is the thing isn't it? Is that it is not as though sex comes first and then gender comes later and then sexuality comes third. It's actually the other way around. When we think about sex we are thinking actually about sexuality. We are retroactively constructing sex from our assumption of heterosexuality. We want the child to be heterosexual. So in order for the child to be heterosexual, the child has to be either a boy so that he can desire a girl. The child has to be a girl so that the child can desire a boy. So we want the child to be heterosexual. So in order for the child to be heterosexual, we are already creating a future where the child is going to be either a man or a woman, depending upon the genitalia that the child has been born with. And in order for that man to happen, 
in order for that heterosexuality to happen, we decide that the child is male. So therefore, maleness is not a biological, maleness is social, just as gender, just as sexuality. And it is interesting because, uh, you know, of late I have been um, hearing a lot of people who are saying, well, you know, we are very liberal now. Um, surely, you know, we don't assume everybody to be heterosexual. You know, we, are, we are cool. We are, we are very liberal people. Yes, we are very liberal. We are, we are okay with homosexuality. Are we really? Because if we look at recent films, whether it is Ek Larki Ko Dekha To Aisa Laga, or if we look at Shubhmangal Jada Savdhan, apparently there is Dostana 2 in the works right now. But if we look at these films, what we will find is that, sure, these films are supposedly, supposedly about a sexually diverse society. But what is being left untouched and uncomplicated is gender. Because if we look at Shubh Mangal Jada Savdhan, to give you just one example, if we look at Shubh Mangal Jada Savdhan, we are going to find what is happening there is that the director is telling, this is something which is published in an interview, the director is telling the actor that, you know, when you are going to do this film, don't worry so much about uh, the homosexual part of it, you know, just be good friends. Seems like a very sensible advice. Only it isn't sensible advice. Because when you're saying just be good friends, what the director is basically wanting the actors to do is to replicate, reproduce a certain kind of masculine friendship. High-fiving, fist bumping, tapping on the shoulder thrice when you hug each other. Yeah? So all the performative tropes of heterosexual masculinity is being asked to activate and then they are activated in the film. So therefore what is being kept intact is the gender. The gender is somehow not being moved around so much. Yes? Even when we are talking about sexual diversity, gender remains stable. And it is this gender which is created not later on in life not when you experience your first tingling of sexual desire. It is being created at the moment of birth. So what we really have to understand is that sex is not biological. Sex is actually social, like gender and like sexuality. All three exist simultaneously. Thank you.